the What To Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they love for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next great read, then the show. Hi, Ori. Welcome to What To Next podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I am a writer and freelance editor from London, from North London. Um, and my first book, uh, The Three of Us, is out today, actually, in the US and Canada, which is very exciting. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here and excited to be on the, on the podcast. Thanks for having so me. So you have the fabulous life in London as a writer, like freelance, like writing for magazines and publications. What does your life lo- looks like? <laughs> you know, so always like from the US looking at I'm like, oh, it's so fabulous. <laughs> you know, grew up, grew up like, reading a lot of chick lit, um, mm-hmm. set in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what is, what is life like in London? Um, it is, what's the best way to put it? It's busy. Um, yeah. It's expensive, um, yeah. but it's always nice. I think one of the best things about London is that everybody seems to have like their place that they like to go, yeah. um, whether it's like a specific restaurant like I have or like a specific bookshop, which I also have, um, a place that you'd just like to go and hang out with your friends or just like to go and be by yourself. And I think it's always nice to find in a really busy city that's always got stuff going on to have to find sort of your one space that you really enjoy. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's very much like a lot of cities. Um, there are also parts of it that are super clean and parts of it that are really dirty <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, um but it's it's really nice it's it's really um it's a real privilege to be able to live in London um and also to be close to like friends and family and stuff like that so it's good, it's good. I love this yeah I got yeah. to live I I got to live in New York City for a long time so I got my city life you know yeah. to describe London I was like yeah this is like somewhere to New York City yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it is it is all good is there something to be living in the big city life and what died um so let's talk about the three of us what is the elevator pitch Ooh, the elevator pitch I would say um is what would you do if your best friend and your partner hated each other yeah. and um so it's set over the course of one day it's told from all three of their perspectives so there are technically there are three characters but I say there are four there's the wife the husband the best friend and the wine um I think the wine <laughs> is the fourth character because they drink a lot of wine um <laughs> And so over the course of the afternoon, they are drinking a lot of wine and a lot of the feelings are coming out between the husband and the best friend. But the wife is also sort of in the mix there um, as sort of a, an unreliable narrator of sorts. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's I think it's it can be people have said it's it's very uncomfortable to read at times because of the tension, but they've also enjoyed it. And it's been like a tense, like a page turner. So I like that. I love this. And so what was the journey to publication? Like when did you got start writing it? Like what was the process, you know, to get to publish? So I'd actually come up with a bunch of other ideas before I even wrote this book. Um, But I think the problem with those ideas is that they were very much what I thought people would want to buy rather than what I actually enjoyed writing. And so my literary agent, she was kind of like, this isn't really working. I don't really get this. And I was like, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, And then I had a conversation with my best friend um, and that kind of sparked the idea for this book. And then I sort of wrote it during um, what's called NaNoWriMo, so National Novel Writing Month. Yeah. And I sent it off to her and she loved it. And then we did some edits together, which were really great because the ending was completely different before we did edits together. And she helped me improve the ending so much. Um, then we sent it out to UK publishers and US publishers. Um, so I've been published brilliantly by Jonathan Cape in the UK and Putnam here in the US. Um, and they've both just done such an amazing job. So did edits with both of my editors there. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, it seems like it feels like a really long time since I got the book deal, which was in 2021, but time flies so much. And now we're here at its publication day, which is amazing. Oh my gosh. And so you always wanted to write books or is this something that, you know, it's like the spark fly, like it's a natural transition from, you know, writing nonfiction to journalism to, to fiction? Um, I think I always wanted to do something to do with storytelling. I didn't yeah. necessarily see myself as a writer. I used to write bits here and there, but I never took it so seriously. Yeah. Um, and then when I was sort of in the last five or six years, um, 
I guess a friend of mine really encouraged me. So she, my friend Angelique, she really encouraged me to write more. Yeah. Um, and so then I thought, okay, maybe this could be a thing. But I, I definitely never thought it would happen like like the way it's happened now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I just always wanted to tell stories. And then this opportunity came up and I met my agent and she was amazing and she really encouraged me and believed in me. So I think that's really helped to sort of get me here. But yeah. I love this and congratulations on a successful book launch. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about your reading life. What kind of books do you tend to read? Oh, that's a great question. I like a bit of everything. I used to be very much a, um, when I was younger, it used to be very much like the Shopaholic series by Sophie Kinsella. Yeah. I used to read all of those. I went on holiday once with my family and I think I had two of the books. And by like day three, my mom had to buy me like the next two because I'd already finished those. I was obsessed with them. <laughs> um, and then as I got older, I think went to university, I started reading a bit more literary stuff. And I was like, I don't read crime. I don't read nonfiction. But then as I matured after that, I was like, oh my gosh, crime is amazing. And so is nonfiction. So I love a little bit of everything. I love a rom-com. Right now I'm reading um, Happy Place by Emily Henry, her new book, yeah. which loving um and then I've got I think I might next might read um Snakehead by um Patrick Radden Keefe because I loved his book Empire of Pain so and I love nonfiction that reads like fiction um so honestly I tried to read a little bit of everything um some biography as well the only thing I don't really read is self-help but mostly because I get therapy so I don't really feel like I need the self-help books <laughs> I am right there with you I go to therapy every week and it's, yeah. it's I, I I sometimes I go twice and sometimes yeah. I have two therapists and so I do the inner work you know like I don't need somebody else telling me how to live my life exactly exactly it's like I pay for that already it's fine <laughs> <laughs> I love this oh okay so do you have any other books you recommend our listeners to pick up like either uh, like one that you like read it's like still think that, do you think about it or what die yeah so the one book that I think about all the time actually is um Exit West by Mohsin Hamid, which was yeah. a really beautiful book. And it was nothing like I was expecting it to be. Um, I think I was expecting kind of almost like a war story, but then I read it and it's got this magical realism in it that's just incredible. And I loved that. Um, and then I also loved You Made a Fool of uh You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Aquak Amezi, which I think I think their writing is just amazing anyway. But then reading that book, I was like, oh my gosh. When I think I posted on my Instagram, I had so many people like message you when you finished it. And I was like, okay. And then I read it and I was like, oh my goodness, this is insane. But like I'm obsessed with this. I need to talk to everybody about it. Um, so I love that. And then um, I've also got Time as a Mother by Ocean Vong that I, I haven't finished reading yet, but I'm reading it sort of in bits and pieces and I'm trying yeah. to get a bit more into poetry. So I'm really enjoying that as well. Oh my gosh, I love these recommendations. And <laughs> I, can, I can agree with some of them. Like, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so Ori, tell us where we can find you online. Um, you can find me uh, at my website, um, oriawilliams.com. And also you can find me on Instagram at oriawilliams as well. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other book recommendations, please visit watchreadnextblog.com. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading.